Hello, my name is Wan Fi Kim, and I'm from KGSEA Mass Circle. And today I'm going to talk about the basics of combinatorics, um, useful tools for solving the problem. And I'm also going to solve two example questions that could help you to understand better. First of all, let's start with the definition of combinatorics. So what is combinatorics? It's the study of discrete structures. And for those of you who are not familiar with the word discrete, discrete means involving two or more independent variables. And combinatorics involves study of counting of structures. And what I mean by counting of structure is like determining, like they're getting the number of arrangement and picking certain number from larger sets. So it differs um, for questions and the tool that I'm going to uh, introduce to you will help you to count the number of structures. And the subtopics includes counting, probability, and miscellaneous ones. First is counting. Um, there are three main useful tools for counting, and the first one is factorial. Uh, factorial is used to determine the number of ways to arrange objects. And for writing it, you're writing like an exclamation point. And what this, what this sign means is you're multiplying all the numbers from one to n. So if you're if you're doing seven factorial, you're multiplying all the all the numbers from one to seven, like one one times two times three. And the next tool they're used for counting is permutation, and permutation is the action of changing the arrangement, especially the linear order of a set of items. And order does matter in permutation. An example of permutation is when there are five chairs and three persons need, need to be seated there. Since the order of each distinct people um, does matter and is considered different, you have to consider the orders. And the formula is located on the right top part and the NPR, this sign is indicating the permutation value and n is the total number of objects. And in my example, n would be five, five chairs and r is indicating the number of objects selected. So in my example, uh, three person would three people would be the number of objects selected. And next is combination, and combination is a way of choosing r objects from a set of n, and order does not matter here. Um, for easier understanding, um, for example, let's say you have to pick two persons from a group that is composed of twelve people. Um, since picking person A and B and picking person B and A is the same is considered the same. We're not considering the order. And the formula for this is located on the right middle part and the right bottom part. And these two signs are indicating the same value. And n is the total number of objects in the set. So in my example, it would be 12 people. And r is the number of shooting objects from the set. So it would be two person. Next important tool is sigma sign, and sigma sign is this E looking sign on the bottom, and it is derived from the Greek letter. An upper limit is telling us where to stop, and it is represented by this N sign. And lower limit tells us where to start, and it is represented by this I equals one sign. And the argument A part is differs by functions and functions, so you have to consider it while looking at different functions. And this is imp important calculation method for solving combinatory problems because the fu those functions and the formulas that I'm going to introduce to you in the later slide involves this sigma slide. And let's talk about the miscellaneous topics. First of all is binomial theorem. And binomial theorem is represented by the function at the bottom and it tells us the expansion of terms. And these terms have the same coefficient driven from Pascal's triangle and, and I'm going to talk about Pascal's triangle in the next slide. So miscellaneous subtopic two is Pascal's triangle and it's a triangle which contains a value from binomial expansion, like I said before, and it teaches us coefficients and powers. And these, these numbers represent the coefficients and each row is represented by the N and each column is represented by the K and it uses combination formula to calculate. And next week, I'm going to talk about the infinite summation, infinite geometric summation. 
And before talking about the infinite series, I'm going to just talk about basic geometric series. And R is representing the common ratio here. And N is the number of sums and A is first term. And for example, if you have series of numbers that go with like two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, then it is a geometric series. And the first term would be two and number of certain sums is maybe five or six. And common ratio would be two because it's doubling the numbers. And geometric series can be infinite and the number and it means that n is becoming the infinite. So there's infinite number of numbers. And without this formula on the right, on the right bottom here, you would be you would have a really hard time calculating it because but since we have a formula here, you can calculate it easily and efficiently. And I'm going to start solving the example problem, which is introductory level. And this is 2014 AMC 8 problem 18. So the question is, four children were born at City Hospital yesterday, and assume each child is equally likely to be boy or girl, which of the following outcomes is most likely? The first option is all four boys, second option is all four girls, third option is two are girls and two are boys, and fourth option is three are, are of one gender and one is of the other gender. And the last choice is telling us that all of these outcomes are equally likely. And you could think that calculating the probability of each scenario would be hard, but since the, each, since the problem told us that each child is equally likely to be born, you can, this is a major hint that we can use to solve this problem. And for the explanation, the choice A, all four are boys, has one over 16 um, probability of warning because since um, a, ch a chance of a child being boy is one over two and there's four boys, we have to do the fourth power of one over two and B is the, using the same tactics as we use in the choice A since, um, child, since the probability of a child being girl is one over two, we're also doing the fourth power of it. And the C is where things is becoming kind of complex uh, to our girls and to our boys. And we have to use the combination formula that we learned from the previous slide because we have to choose two, two sets to be girls and two sets to be boys among four sets. And since uh, we have to choose the genders, we are also multiplying one over 16 as we calculated in the A and B. So the outcome is turns out to be three over eight. And for D, three, for the scenario D, uh, we're also using com combination because we have to choose whether three, uh, whether three gender is going to be same or one gender to be same. And we're also multiplying one over 16 to choose the gender and the outcome turns out to be one over four. And since the values of all choices are different, E should be eliminated. And since D is the greatest value, the answer is D. And next one is the intermediate level. And it's come. it came from 2017 AMC 10A problem 18. Uh, Amelia has a coin that lends heads with probability of one over three. And Blaine has a coin that lends on heads with probability of two over five. Amelia and Blaine alternately toss their coins until someone gets ahead. The first one to get ahead wins. All coin tosses are independent. Amelia goes first. The probability that Amelia wins is P over Q, where P and Q are the relatively prime positive integers. What is Q minus P? So this problem is kind of complicated than the others because we have to consider the two scenario which Amelia wins in the first round and the possibility of Amelia not winning in the first round. And it is going to be continuous, so it's kind of hard. But for the explanation, let's say A is a probability that Amelia wins and these is equal to chances she wins on her first turn plus chances she gets to her turn again. And firstly, the chance she wins on her first run turn is one over three because the question informs us. And second, the chance she gets to her turn again is um, two over three times three over five because chance of her not winning on the first turn is two over three and chances that the opponent doesn't want is three over five. So if we multiply them together, we get two over five. So 
Oh, so the probability that Amelia wins is one over three plus two over five times um, A. And since one over three equals three over five times A, um, A is five over nine. And answer is Q minus P, which is five, nine minus five equals four. Thank you for listening. Thank you.